Write this down, please. The purpose for time. Very important. The value of life is not in its duration, but its donation. You are not important because of how long you live. You are important because of how effective you live. And most people are so concerned about growing old rather than being effective. The people who have impacted the world didn't live long. Martin Luther King, John F. Kennedy. I mean, these people who impact the world were not old people. But they lived so effectively that we cannot erase them from history. The oldest man in the Bible is Methuselah. He lived to be six, 960, 600, 969 years. What a guy. And the only thing the Bible says about him is he died. I would love to borrow some of his years. What, what would I do with his years? And therefore, when you have a purpose for your life, it disciplines your behavior and chooses your habits. Amen. Purpose gives life meaning. Here's another statement I thought was interesting in the book of Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. One of my favorite verses says, To everything there is a season, and to every purpose there's a time under heaven. In other words, if you are in heaven, it's eternal, there's no time. But when you come below heaven, you now have a purpose that has been fulfilled in time. That means you were born to do something, but you ain't got forever to do it. And therefore, you are on a race between you and your grave. I always tell people my, my greatest motivator is death. When I think about my death, it makes me work hard. And death has been placed in my life as a timing. As a matter of fact, the next verse of that chapter says, there's a time to be born and a time to die. In other words, you got to know that there's a time you're supposed to die and you're supposed to complete your assignment before you die. And if you die before you complete your assignment, you were killed. This is why God says he gave you time to fulfill your purpose. Look at verse 10. It says, I have seen the burden God has placed upon all men. And that burden is he has made everything beautiful in his time. The word beautiful there means matured. He gives you time to fulfill and mature everything that you were created to do. In other words, whatever you were born to do, you were given the right amount of time to do it in. Now, there are some people living on overtime right now because you haven't found your purpose and God has given you grace. You remember that there was a man who actually lived his fulfillment of his purpose and God told him it's time to die. His name was Hezekiah. And Hezekiah, God met him person. God said, Hezekiah, you've done what you're supposed to do. It's time to die. Hezekiah argued with God. He must have been from the Bahamas. He said, God, I don't want to die now. I don't want to die now. I want to live long. God says, no, you must die now. He said, no, I don't want to die now. Give me some more years. And he begged God, and God gave him 15 extra years. In those 15 extra years, he gave birth to some of the worst kings of Israel. Tell your neighbor, die when you're supposed to. When you pass your time, you begin to do foolishness. Now, here's something I thought was interesting, too. He also says this statement. It says, And the Lord also has set eternity in their hearts of every man, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. Now, this is a very important statement. Let me explain what it means. It says, God took you out of eternity and put you in time. In other words, your spirit is an eternal spirit that came to this earth with an eternal purpose, but God trapped it in a body in time. That means you are literally an eternal spirit in a timed body. That's a problem. Now, look at this verse again. It also says, he has done something that you cannot fathom. And what is it? What he has done from the beginning to end. In other words, God took the beginning of your life and the end of your life and put them both in a body and put it in time. So you came to earth with your beginning and your end inside of you now. This is very important. That means your future is not ahead of you. We keep thinking we're going to our future. And that's why we keep depending on people, depending on relationships, depending on connections. But your future is not ahead of you in other people's favor. Your future is trapped inside of you, and you are carrying your own raw material. And that is why your future does not depend on your external environment. 
sometimes you are with people who don't like you. That's okay. Because as long as you like you, what's inside of you will bring you through. <laughs> Write this down, please. The purpose for time. Very important. The value of life. This is very important. Now, why am I so confident as a man? Why am I so confident as a human being? What makes me so confident is that one statement right there. If you want to face the future with confidence, you got to be convicted in your heart that your future is actually God's past. Oh, help me explain this. In other words, no manufacturer makes a product without finishing it first. <laughs> Before Ford Motor Company creates a car, it finishes it first. It designs it, completes it, all the engineering drawings, everything is set, and when it's finished, then they start it. In other words, they present the future first, then they go back and create the present. Now listen carefully now. Whatever you were born to do, God finished first. When God decided what he wanted you to become, then he decided, let me start you. So your future existed before your present. Your present is carrying the future every